the particle nature of electromagnetic radiation. Hi grade tens, in the previous video we discussed an introductory video to electromagnetic radiation. In today's video we're going to continue with that. I'm going to speak about what the particle nature of electromagnetic radiation is and I'm going to show you a formula that you need to use in your calculations, in your tests and in your exams. So first of all, what do I mean by particle nature of electromagnetic radiation? Remember, we spoke about electromagnetic radiation as being light, mostly. There's a whole spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. I went through that in the previous video, but we simplified by speaking about light. Now, we said light has a wave-particle duality, or electromagnetic radiation has a wave-particle duality, which means that under different circumstances, light or electromagnetic radiation can act as a wave, or it can act as a particle. We went over the wave nature of light in the previous video. Now we're going to focus on the particle nature. So some terms that you have to know. Quantization is when I divide something into smaller parts. You will eventually reach a part where it cannot be divided anymore. So think about if you have to tear up a piece of paper. And you have to tear up a piece of paper and you have to tear it up and tear it up and tear it up and tear those pieces into more pieces and tear those pieces into more pieces. Eventually you are going to reach a point where you can't tear that paper any smaller. So think about this term or this concept as being called quantization. So if you take a physical quantity and you divide it up into tiny, tiny parts and you keep going and you reach a point where you cannot divide it anymore, we say that that quantity has been quantized. So it consists of indivisible parts or quantities, which means little parts or, or, or quantities that can't be divided up anymore. And the smallest indivisible quantity is called a quantum so why do I care about quantization and quantum and stuff like this? Well, we need to look at it in terms of light or electromagnetic radiation. So electromagnetic radiation is not actually continuous. I want you to think of it as having little tiny energy packets or pockets. So it says here behind me that electromagnetic radiation is not continuous, but rather it consists of indivisible, which means you can't divide it, fixed quantities of energy or packets of energy and we call these qu these quanta or photons so we mostly refer to it as photons so from this point out i will be referring to it as photons so a photon or a quantum is the smallest indivisible quantity it's a packet of energy that light and other electromagnetic radiation is composed of so it's the smallest indivisible little packets of energy that light is composed of so if i shine a beam of light and you can see that light beam that is actually composed of thousands millions of photons those are little packets of energy that are contained in light and we can calculate the energy of those photons using a very, very particular formula. So that's the formula there on the screen. You get this on your data sheets or your formula sheet. So it's given to you in exams. E is the energy of the photon and it's measured in joules or J. So the unit for energy is joules or J. H, this is a constant, Planck's constant, and this number over here, 6,63 times 10 to the negative 4, because it's constant, it means it'll never change. So it'll always be that number, and this number you can find on your data sheets or on your formula sheets, okay? It'll be written there for you. And F is the frequency of the radiation or frequency of the light measured in hertz, so remember, electromagnetic waves carry energy. They carry these photons, these packets of energy. So when we have the electromagnetic waves, so think about maybe an X-ray or infrared light or UV light, they pass through the material. And some of that energy can be absorbed by that material, which raises the internal energy of the material, which is why some materials heat up, for example. And just remember what we discussed in the other video. The shorter the wavelength, the higher or the bigger the frequency. And if you have a bigger frequency, you have a bigger energy. So remember that formula that I just showed you? E, energy, is equal to HF. What that means is that if frequency gets bigger, E gets bigger. What relationship is that called again? That's called directly proportional. That symbol is used for directly proportional. It means that if F doubles, E doubles. If F gets three times bigger, 
E gets three times bigger. That's what a direct proportion relationship is. If F halves, E will half. So they increase or decrease by the same proportion. They match one another in that way. But H must be a constant in order for this relationship to be true, which it is. H is Planck's constant. It's always the same value. So we know the higher the frequency of the wave, the higher the energy. And if you watch the previous video, you will know that gamma rays have the highest frequency, which means they have the highest energy. And that's why gamma rays are the most dangerous type of electromagnetic radiation. The other relationship that you need to know is the following. And this we discussed in the previous video. C, remember, is the speed of light. It's the speed at which all electromagnetic waves travel at, 3 times 10 to the 8. So C is a constant. It does not change. Then, if that is true, which it always is, C is a constant, it does not change. C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and it always will be. So because that is true, we know that these variables, frequency and wavelength, are inversely proportional. And that's how you write inversely proportional. So because C is a constant. So what that means, grade tens, is that if my wavelength gets bigger, frequency must get smaller. So if I double wavelength, frequency must halve. If I triple my wavelength, frequency must be a third of what it normally is. If I quadruple or times my wavelength by four, my frequency must divide by four or it must be a quarter of what it normally is. I hope that makes sense. That is called an inversely proportional relationship. And that's why we can say, and you need to know, that gamma rays, for example, have the biggest frequency, so highest frequency. So F is very big. That means that the wavelength is very small. And radio waves, for example, have a very long wavelength, which means that their frequency is very small. Inversely proportional, the opposite of one another. In the next video, I will be going over how to use these in calculations, just like the ones you will be getting in your exams and in your tests. So I hope to see you in the next video. Please remember that if you missed the previous video, remember the previous video, we went through all sorts of things. Like we went through the spectrum. We went through the order of the spectrum. We went through how the energy waves or electromagnetic waves are created, how that happens. If you've missed any of that, please, please, please check out the links in the description box below. That video will be linked there. My waves playlist will be linked there where you can find past paper videos, videos where I go over the calculations. You don't want to miss it. And please subscribe for more physics videos. I do chemistry as well. I do math as well. So I hope to see you in another video. Bye everyone.